Hello friends, welcome back to the Rummage Workshop. This week we have a hot mess on our hands, guys. This mid-century credenza has peeling damaged veneer from top to bottom and the vintage hinges on the doors have completely failed. I certainly have my work cut out for me on this one, but something tells me that seeing this wood all cleaned up will make it all worth it. So let's get after it. As always, and most importantly, we give everything a good vacuum and deep clean with a strong degreaser. These little drawers on the cabinet side are in amazing condition. They'll just need a little furniture balm to wake them back up and that should be about it for the repairs on these guys. Next we move to the larger drawers. As I was pulling these out, I noticed that all of the runners down the line are loose and the bottom runner is completely missing. So I added these to my repair list and continued on with cleaning. I like to use TSP Alternative as my cleaning agent. Just be sure to wear gloves and wipe away the TSP with warm water so there's no residue left behind. Oh my God. I wanna give a dose of reality in these videos. Not everything goes according to plan every single time. In this section, I'm contending with a rusted out hardware screw. It took me 20 minutes total to remove. I'm actually shocked that I didn't have to bleep anything out here. As much as I love what I do, there are moments of frustration, and sometimes you capture that moment of frustration on film. In cases like this, I find it best to show everyone and just laugh about it. You are horrible. Get out! Now that the entire piece is clean and the hardware has been expertly removed, I can move on to my repairs list, which is extensive. First, I start by removing the legs and getting the box up on some bricks to make it easier to work on. Now it's time to get to work repairing the veneer. The veneer along the edges is peeling up, so I'll start by gluing the larger pieces down and then clamping them into place to dry. When wood gluing, you want your glue to be squeezing out the edges when you clamp it down. So the key is to slightly overload it, then wipe away the excess with a damp rag. As I'm working with this veneer, I'm finding that there's just way too much damage for me to expose it. So my final design will include painting the drawers and I'll have to come up with another way to give visual interest. While the veneer repairs are drying, I move on to repairing these runners. The same rules apply here. Overload with glue, clamp down, then wipe away the excess glue. After they dry, I'll add in some pin nails to give a little bit of extra support. For the missing runner, I'm going to use a runner that I had lying around in the shop from a past project. I find and mark out the center line, then overload it with glue. This is the first time that this has happened to me in a long time, but I actually ran out of clamps. So I'm going to use small cans of paint to hold down the back portion of this runner as it dries. I let all of that wood glue cure overnight, and now I'm coming in with Bondo to fill all of the holes and dings. Bondo is my favorite because it dries rock hard, but you do have to move fast as it sets up very, very quickly.
While that bond is drying, I'm going to sand out the deep gouges on the legs using 80, 120, then 220 grit sandpaper. When sanding something round, move in the direction of the wood grain, let the sander do all the work, and don't let the sander sit in one place for too long. This will help prevent you from leveling out your curve. Now it's time to get working on this door. It looks like someone's already sanded away the finish on it, so I'm gonna carefully buff out the remaining dings and swirl marks with my hand sander. This veneer was paper thin from past refinishing, so I was very conservative with how far I sanded down. It's not perfect, but it is a night and day difference from what we started with. Now I'm coming in with 150 grit sandpaper to buff out all the Bondo patches and to give every surface a quick scuff sand. So I made the mistake of deciding to just see what the wood drawers would look like when I sanded them down. And they're beautiful. So now I'm really torn. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I already have a design in place where I had planned on painting the front of the, the drawers and keeping the door wood, which has already been sanded down. It looks beautiful but the damage on the drawers was so severe, especially along the edges, that it was starting to look like it just wasn't an option for me. But this thing is sanding down so quickly and easily. And since the dam majority of the damage is sequestered to the edges, I'm gonna go and play around with another design where I leave some of the wood exposed in the center of the drawers and then find a way to incorporate the rest of the, des des the design because this wood is just too pretty i can't I, like i can't cover it up with paint like i can't do it it's gorgeous there are still some or there is still some damage that i'm gonna have to contend with i hope you can see it just along all of these edges there's just a huge amount of gouging and like entire sections of veneer that are gone and there's just not much I can do besides taking a coarse grit sandpaper and really working hard to to just buff this out slightly it's never going to be perfect it's still going to have damage along those edges but I can I feel like if I take my time I can make it look a little bit more um, streamlined. I have no clue if this is actually the way I'm going to go with it. I'm All I can do is just sand all of these drawers down and see what I'm working with. I will, at this point, because this is so pretty, I'm going to be devastated if I still have to paint over it, but oh no, I don't know what to do. I hate when this happens. I spent like an hour last night coming up with a full design for the taping I was going to do and Things change, this happens. I thought that this was gonna be completely destroyed and it's actually gorgeous, so. <sighs> Damn it, Rochelle. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now that everything's sanded, I'm gonna wipe away all the sanding dust with a damp rag, give the workshop a thorough vacuum, then start in on our design for the drawers. I drew out so many variations of this design before settling on one that I loved. My design has to cover the damaged areas and bondo patches on the sides, but I still need everything to feel cohesive and deliberate. I started by measuring out six inches from the side. This portion will be completely painted to hide the damage. Our line has to be flawless so it does not look like a patch job, but rather a design element. I then fill in the center space with yellow frog type. Next, I start measuring out the lines for my design. I then make sure to write down all the measurements so I can replicate them on each side and every drawer for a balanced look. I don't do any math at all. I map out my design by choosing hit points that are visually pleasing. I use a piece of one inch tape that I've cut in half as a guide for easy cutting. I also change out my X-Acto blade several times for clean cuts throughout the project. Once I've made my final cuts, I seal the edges of the tape with a clear coat. This is an extra step, yes, but it helps to ensure that my lines will be crisp with no bleed through. I then apply two coats of paint, sanding between each coat. Once dry to the touch, I gently pull up the tape, stick around until the end for the full reveal. Next up, I painted the box the same coal black from Fusion Mineral Paint. I just needed two thin coats for full coverage, giving the paint two hours to dry between layers. Then I top coated the door, the drawers, and the box with Verithane water-based poly for a durable finish. If you ever see your top coat cloud up like this, do not freak out. As long as you haven't slapped on too much paint, this should fully clear as it dries. Now for the final touches. I lined all of the smaller drawers and buttered up the dry wood on the outsides. Then I hung the door back up using simple butt hinges and reattached all of the hardware. Let me remind you of what this piece looked like before and just take a look at the statement piece it is now.